You know what the best part about the PS6 releasing is going to be is that we are no longer going to have to support the PS5. And listen, man, you, you can go ahead and argue with me all of you want. All of you want. Definitely mispronounce that. And I'm absolutely not going to edit that out of the video. However, you can argue with me all you want. I don't think anybody is going to disagree with this statement. The PS5 is by far the worst console we have ever had. Think about the PS1. Think about the PS2, arguably the best console launch in history of all consoles. PS3, still an incredible console, and that's kind of when the whole online stuff ended up starting. PS4, PS4 Pro, pretty good launch of a console. It eventually kind of went downhill over time, and then the PS5 came out, and <laughs> garbage. Probably Pandemic had big role to play on this, right? However, three years later, after the pandemic, still garbage. What game would make you buy the PS5? The only game that I can think of is Astrobot. That's literally the only game that I can think of on why I would literally buy a PS5. It's the only game. It's literally the only, or it's the game that caused me to buy the PS5. And then I returned it when I was finished. Because I'm not, I'm not going to support Sony and keep that thing if, if it's the only game that's actually worth playing. So convenience, here's all of the specs. I'm going to go ahead and go over this with you. The chiplet design is with some mention of possibly utilizing Navi 5 desktop chiplets, backwards compatibility to PS5 and PS4 generations, no mention of PS3, but this is probably going to be a really big factor. Manufacturing plan for mid-2027, likely fall 2027 or early 2028 release date, 160 watts, 8 times Zen 6 or later. This is huge here. These two things right here. This thing is going to be an absolute monster. It has 40 to 48 RDNA 5 compute units at 3 gigahertz, 160-bit or 192-bit bus, which this is probably going to happen right here with the specs and performance that we're seeing this thing actually capable of outputting with GDDR7. That's also going to make a massive difference with uh, uh, hardware of this nature where it's, it doesn't have that like behemoth of a brick NVIDIA graphics card sitting in your computer. And then the price is going to be so 400 to $600 instead of a $700 to $1,000 console. And this is where Sony's opportunity is going to lay because for those of you that are unaware, Xbox's next console is going, it's literally going to be a PC. Xbox is moving away from the console space. And look, man, I, I, I genuinely think that Xbox is doing some incredible stuff right now. I fully support Xbox and Microsoft. Game Pass is, to me, like literally the best bang for your buck thing out there, period, for a gamer. Like you literally get brand new games released all of the time. You get new games added every single week. You can play it on PC or console. And if you, if you play it on PC and then all of a sudden want to play it on console, you can actually like your saves like go back and forth. They, there's just, I, I genuinely do not understand how they actually got. What I think is happening is they, they take a loss from it, but because of the, how, how the operating system works and all these freaking paid features on windows. Now, I think that's how they get around it because they lock you into the ecos kind of like Apple. They, they lock you into the ecosystem which people can hate on it all you want. But I mean, as somebody that plays and uses their PC more than anything, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be using Windows anyway because I'm not dealing with Linux's headaches. <laughs> um, but so, so, so for Sony to be releasing a $400 to $600 console, that's, so we're talking like with, with specs like this, dude, with with the with the Zen six and then the the RDNA five inside of this, we're talking like double the performance of a PS five Pro. Like this is territory for four K one hundred and twenty hertz without the actual things struggling. Like this is actually going to be able to like support the newer like four K one hundred and twenty hertz TVs. That's really those are the only TVs that I've seen. I haven't seen anything go over one hundred and twenty hertz monitors. Obviously go into the 240 at 4k now uh, i don't think there's anything higher than 240 
I mean, there might be, well, obviously there's 480 Hertz, like at 1440p and I, I get that. But if we come down here to the actual handheld, there's going to be a PS6 portable that should beat the Xbox Alley X in performance. This I do not agree with. This is where the fanboyism is coming into play. Listen, the, the Xbox Rogue Alley, this thing is going to be an absolute monster. And this thing is also going to be upwards of, it's going to be around like $700 for the lower end model. And then it's going to be, I'm pretty sure they're saying like, let's just call it $1,200. bucks. i am not going to say $1,199, even though I just barely said that. I just wanted to talk about this because for those of you that have been on this channel for a very long time, I was making PS5 content. But as a creator, when, when the pandemic ended up hitting and Sony chose to not put these consoles in stores and nobody could get one because the bot, this was like the new, this was when that whole bot situation started coming into play and people were, were like using those. So companies weren't able to counter these and they were buying up all, it's still happening. Even with the NVIDIA graphics card, it's, it's still happening. So people were like buying up everything and reselling them and as a creator that was making playstation content i could not get one thankfully because in all fairness sony did me a massive it's they literally set me free for life with the pc business that i ended up starting getting into pc gaming actually starting my other channels and all of that kind of stuff so i actually should be thanking sony however there's no denying dude that the ps5 is just look if we're going to if we're going to lie and play the fanboy game, nothing will end up changing, okay? So we have to be honest with this. When we say the PS5 is the worst console that has ever launched, that is a fact, okay? Let's go ahead and put our fanboyism aside. Nobody wants a remaster this week, a remake next week, a remaster the week after that, charge you this much more for PS Plus, charge you this much more for that, charge you this much more for this here's a here's something that you're required to have in order to do this let's promise you this but never release it it's literally so 4k 160 instead of 4k 120 and just so we're clear okay this is bull crap sony's full of crap there's not a single game out there on the ps5 that runs at 4k 120 hertz okay there's, this is what, this is what I'm saying about the PS5 being an absolute turd bucket of a console with a bunch of misleading bull crap throughout its entire lifespan games that nobody wants to buy because we could just launch it on an emulator on PC, click this graphical enhancement and boom, we have our new remake. So I'm, I genuinely am excited for the PS6. It's just the PS5 is like really, it's kind of ruined my excitement for anything in regards to the PS5. But as somebody that's gotten into the PC space over the past four or five years, this right here has me very excited. These three things, the Zen 6, the RDNA 5, and then the, the bus with GDR, GDDR7. Like all of that stuff, that, that's going to be an absolute monster of a console. 4K 160. I don't think that's going to be possible that I just, I just, just me being real with you, dude. And then this right here, 4k 120 instead of that on the PS five, that's an absolute misleading lie of horse crap. The PS five is not, I don't, again, dude, I don't care what any of you say. You can go ahead and try this yourself. Load up a tool that actually benchmarks and shows you the frame rate of the games that you are playing. You can go ahead and click 4K 120 hertz, but your game is not running at 4K 120 hertz. This is just like the stupid lie of 8K being possible on the PS. Oh, well, what about Gran Turismo? That game runs at 8K. <laughs> hey, how about, okay. So here's the thing. When you launch a game on PC, there's this thing called settings inside these games. So, yeah, absolutely. I could go ahead and go buy a freaking $200 Dell from Walmart, and I can go ahead and load up a game and play it at 8K as well if I literally dumb down the settings to the bottom of the barrel lowest of low settings. Any game is possible to be played at 8K, but are you enjoying that game that you can brag runs at 8K? I can go ahead and here, let me do you a favor. I'm going to go ahead and show you this live. Are you ready for this? I mean, watch how, watch how much horsepower this takes. Are you ready? Boom. There's your sharpness. 
Sick. Oh my God. Look at how sharp my image is right now. Whoa. Look at it. It's so sharp. It's so sick. Look at it. It's so sharp. It's so sick. Let me go ahead and disable it now. Ready? Boom. Now it's not sharp anymore. Sharp. Boom. Oh my God. It's so sharp. It's, it's just so sharp. It's so sick. Ready? Boom. Now it's not sharp anymore. Hold on. One more time. One more time. You ready? Boom. Sharp. Not sharp. Sharp. Not sharp. Sharp. Not sharp. Sharp. Not sharp. Or you know what another great example of what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is, you know, you know how like this is Sony camera right here. You know, those phones that you have that just seemingly seem to be able to record and do all this other crap on the exact same thing with the camera little thing just being like minuscule yet big sony cameras just for some reason just just i don't know why it's just because it's a sony camera i guess i guess that's just why it's like four thousand dollars one thousand four thousand one thousand four thousand one thousand four thousand four thousand one thousand 8K, 60 frames per second. 4K, 60 frames per second. $4,000. 1,000. 8K, 60. 4,000, 4K, 60. Does this look like a phone recording to you? No, here, let me, here, let me introduce you to what a phone recording would look like. You ready for this? Let me go ahead and do it just like we did with the PS5. I genuinely am excited for the PS6 and if they can link this handheld to the PS6 kind of like what Xbox has done with the with with like how you can play games on your Xbox and then if you want to play them on PC you can actually do that and and have all your save files and things of that nature. I think that that's going to be sick. I think that that will be really cool. And uh yeah, dude, I just I don't know. I'm excited for the whole handheld scene to start doing so well because I grew up with the Game Boy Advance and it just, it, I mean, obviously I know these, they're totally different now, but it, whatever. I, I think it's just handhelds are kind of cool, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about all this stuff down in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.